Hey folks, good morning and welcome to another episode of Steelers Morning Rush. I'm Alan Saunders. It is Monday, September 23rd, and it is a victory Monday as the Pittsburgh Steelers are 3-0 after beating the Los Angeles Chargers 20-10 on Sunday in what was another dominant performance for this Pittsburgh Steelers defense that is now first in the NFL with an absurd eight points per game average. Eight. Eight. That's one score per game average against the Steelers defense they have in three second halves of games so far not allowed a single touchdown and have only allowed six points this defense is on an incredible pace to start the season and while I don't think they've played an elite offense yet there are certainly evidence that these teams that they've played can and have scored the Chargers came into the game First in the NFL in rushing with the NFL's leading rusher in J.K. Dobbins, and he left with 44 yards. You look at what the Atlanta Falcons have done in two weeks after they played the Pittsburgh Steelers on offense, and they look that win looks completely different than it did at the time. This it is really hard to con- conceptualize through three games exactly how good this defense has played, but let's just say they are on some 2,000 Ravens, 85 Bears. 76 Steelers kind of pace right now. It's early. They'll have to sustain it. They'll have to avoid injury. And they lost one key player in Alex Highsmith already. But I want to talk about some underrated parts of this defense and why the Steelers have been as good as they've been through three weeks. And I'm starting with old 97 in the middle, man. Cam Hayward had an incredible game. He has been absolutely dominant against the run through three weeks. He is the single biggest factor in the Steelers' run game success. Why they shut down Javante Williams, why they shut down this Chargers attack that was leading the league in rushing. He was so good shedding double teams. There's a play in this game where he throws a tight end three yards backwards, grabs a pulling guard, and makes the tackle of J.K. Dobbins by himself with the guard in his face. He just tackles the guard and the running back. It's like Aaron Donald has been revived, except that Cam Hayward is older than Aaron Donald ever was. Like, this is an incredible performance from a player that, for some reason, so much of the Steelers fan base hated all off season. They were mad that he wouldn't take a pay cut. They were mad that he was negotiating for a new contract. They they were mad that that the Steelers signed him to an extension that by the way contained zero guaranteed money. It was basically the most team friendly possible extension he could have signed. I don't understand the Steelers fan base's misplaced feelings for Cam Hayward. But y'all should love this man because he is playing some incredible defense right now and is the biggest factor in the Steelers' run game success by far. Oh, by the way, also had a sack uh, in this game too. That's not what he's being paid for, but he can do that too. He pushed the pocket back in Justin Herbert's face all day. And in a game where the Chargers had some pretty good tackles, at least until Rayshon Slater got hurt, and they line up with a hundred tight ends and fullbacks and they have two good pass protecting running backs. They gave themselves all the help they could to try to keep the Steelers edge rushers off the board. They couldn't still couldn't do it. They held them down for a little bit, but it was still a lot of pressure on Herbert from Cam Hayward. And with him not being able to move, uh, man, 97 has been on one for three weeks. He looks like a guy. He told me in the preseason, he didn't have to prove anything to anyone other than himself. Well, I think he looks like a guy who's trying to prove some things to some people with all due respect, Cam. You're not, (laughs) you don't look like a guy who only owes to himself. You look like a guy who wants to rub it in the nose of every single person that said he wasn't worth that contract he signed, that he should have taken a pay cut, that he was too old, too injury prone, wasn't going to be the same player. Nonsense. Cam Hayward is a real one and he's tearing it up this year. If he continues this pace, he's going to be an all pro again. Mark, mark it down. Another player I want to talk about that I think has been underappreciated so far is the exploits of linebacker number six, Patrick Queen. Now, I'm going to start off with saying this. You cannot be a field goals and turnovers defense and drop your turnovers, and he absolutely did drop an interception in the first half of this game that could have made it a little bit uh, – well, it could have made it a laugher, let's be honest, if, if he would have been able to – because he had a long room to run with that one as well. Um, and that's two in a row, two weeks in a row, where he did get his hands on one. That was a fourth down the week before in Denver, and he probably did the right thing by batting that one down. But uh, I think you know Patrick Queen has 
hasn't made a lot of splash plays. He's had a couple missed tackles, but I think that's underselling what he does for this defense in that he is taking on roles that the Steelers have not been able to assign to linebackers in the past, and he's succeeding with them. Watch him carry Lad McConkey down the field in this game. Go back and watch it. Watch the Hail Mary at the end of the first half. Yeah, Minka Fitzpatrick's down there. Yeah, uh, DeMonte KZ and Dante Jackson are down there. Go watch number six carry his rod receiver all the way down the field, 50 yards down the end zone. He's right there with every DB. When was the last time the Steelers had a linebacker that could do that? How often have Steelers fans and the media ripped the Steelers for being like, why do you have guys like Vince Williams? Remember Vince Williams covering Keenan Allen? Remember Robert Spillane covering Jarvis Landry in a playoff game? And be like, why do they do this? These guys can't do that. That guy can. That guy can, and he has been. He hasn't made any splash, and he hasn't been 100% on his tackling, and I think he'll be the first one to tell you that he can be better. But the ability of him to take on difficult assignments and win them has made the entire Steelers defense so much better, and I think that is a true uh, team player there in number six because, uh, you know, He's not in it for for the for the glory, man. He's in it to win it, and he's having a lot of fun right now. And I think you know the the last one is Deshaun Elliott. Uh, he's just around the football all the time, a true playmaker. Um, you know, I wrote this week about the Steelers bucking the national trend. Right, the cover two is the sort of conversation. By the way, the only touchdown the Steelers gave up uh, this week was against the cover two scheme between Joey Porter and Minka Fitzpatrick. The Steelers aren't in a cover two because Minka Fitzpatrick is one of the best safeties in the world, especially when he's the lone guy in center field. And because Deshaun Elliott can make plays when you put him in the box and he can handle passing assignments there. We have not seen the Steelers get bludgeoned to death with check downs coming out of the backfield like we have so many times in the past. And I think that's six and that's 25 taking care of business in the passing game against difficult challenges while also being stout against the run. Those three guys are keeping the Steelers strong against the run and the pass. They're doing a really good job of it. I understand T.J. Watt's a star. He deserves his flowers. Minkah Fitzpatrick, of course. Joey Porter Jr., the tackling, seems to be much improved in addition to what we knew we were getting in terms of coverage. Look at Nick Herbig coming off the bench. If you want someone to get excited about his game, go check out Baldy's breakdown. I can't do any better than that. Nick Herbig's a real one, too. But let's talk about those under underestimated guys especially in the middle of this defense because they're what's making it all tick. And that's why right now the best defense in the NFL. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that bell uh, for the notifications. Like, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss a single episode of Morning Rush, Afternoon Drive, Sights and Sounds. I'll have more stuff from the Steelers locker room today, and I'll be back here on this channel with Smitty around 6. Until then, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and enjoy.